Hi everybody, how you doing? I'm doing a 30 minute session today. This is for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. So the goals are spiritual boot camp. We're really gonna navigate for any ugly sides of this client, <laughs> do some healing, help the client feel whole, bring back any missing pieces. It's gonna be an interesting session. So stick around if you're curious about how energy healing works. Maybe you feel something similar and you would like to receive some healing from this session for your life. Stick around. We're gonna be diving in here shortly. I wanna thank you so much to the client. It's really nice to meet you. It's an honor to help you with these goals. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna read your goals out loud now and then I'm gonna relax, get in the zone here. And we're gonna see what we see. We're gonna heal what we can heal, okay? You say, hi, Abby, I'm ready for the spiritual boot camp. I'd like to heal any ugly, dark aspects of myself. My goal is to be more whole, bringing back any fractured parts of my soul. Okay. When I read ugly, dark aspects, I think of inner demons, the broken parts of your own soul that are wounded, and that wounded energy is influential and pulls us down into darker landscapes emotionally and it can be a little bit shielding for us <laughs> blinding for us to really experience our true light and that true vibe that we are from deep down inside so we're gonna navigate <laughs> all right i'm gonna relax now let's see what your darker aspects actually look like the goal is to help you feel whole. <sighs> Bring back any missing parts here. Okay. <sighs> they want me to just open the door and then allow the first thing to come. So we're going to start there. Literally, I am opening a door in the universe. You know... I'm stepping out into a fairly beautiful landscape. It's a nature scene. There's a waterfall not too far away from me. There's tall trees. It's almost nighttime. There's still a haze of the sun. And when I step into here, I, I expected it to be a, an ugly beginning, but it's a beautiful beginning. Starting to look around and I notice the air is like peppery. So if the air is peppery, it's gonna make you sneeze. It's not easy to just inhale, exhale pepper. So there is a bit of a conflict. It's peculiar. Who expects pepper to be in the air of a, a nice forest area? <laughs> Beautiful little waterfall over there. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause and I'm just gonna pay attention here. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm altering vibrationally my relationship with the space, my relationship with time, my relationship with the pepper. When I just look at the pepper now, not as though it's invisible because I'm experiencing it. I actually can see the particles and there's all these little black dots everywhere. It's almost like a pestilence in a way. If a virus could be everywhere, if you could actually see it, if it could be little black dots just making up a beautiful scene. It gets in the way of you actually being able to experience the beauty of nature, actually be able to experience inner peace. It's almost like this is more important. This black pepper, this pestilence, this is capturing your breath so it's inhaling and exhaling the pepper instead of the harmonious nature the peace okay it's a masculine energy it's in like millions of tiny little black dot pieces i'm bringing you forward i'm actually having you step into my shoes we share the same body here i'm bringing your eyes forward i want you to look at this with me You use your hand and you sort of grasp one, you grasp two, and 
For some reason, you translate it into lightning bugs. You say, oh, they're beautiful, the beautiful lightning bugs. So I'm exploring this. Because yes, we can transform negative energy into positive energy pretty quick. But I got to I gotta make sure that what is the reality of this? Maybe there's something very negative, but you're not able to see the negative side of it. And so you see the beautiful side of it, but it still adds conflict. So let's see. That, no. <laughs> I, I show you the answer is no to that. I, I appreciate that you turned it into lightning bugs, but vibrationally, the lightning bugs are dead. I'm helping you see the raw reality. And once you start to see things for the way they truly are, that something that you want it to be adorable or sweet is actually <sighs> sad. It's kind of like a death that you hold in the palm of your hand. You know, it doesn't jolt you all that much. That surprises me. Because this is meant to be a bit of a conflict. It shows that you're able to work on difficult things. Things that would challenge most people, you can kind of absorb it and work through it a lot quicker. So now that you see the lightning bolts are just, the lightning bugs, excuse me, they're just these dead insects here in your hands. And you start to notice that they're all suspended, like millions of dead ones in the air. And all turns into a smoke. And I see the waterfall as a doorway, it's kind of tall, skinny doorway. It's not so much a waterfall anymore, it's actually a dense structure. We're looking at this door and there's a delay here as we decide, is this the door we are ready to navigate? We're ready to go through that door, see where it takes us. It's interesting because this all starts with a door. We go through that door, we witness this nature scene, the black pepper appears. Yes, it's beautiful lightning bugs. No, they're actually all dead. Time to see things for the way they truly are. <sighs> Next step. Is it the waterfall doorway? Or is it time that we just acclimate to this space still and really circulate and make sense of it? My guys say it's time to move through the next door. This door isn't easy to reach. <sighs> I ask you, you ready for this? And there's this echo that says you aren't going to understand how to be ready for this. So the answer needs to be yes, I'm ready for this, but it's okay if there's no conceivable way to really know how to be ready for this. You'll learn how in time. You're holding yourself back. I know that we're going to have to shed some layers here. It's time to just shed some layers. Just shed the layers. We have to leave everything behind. Just bring our minds with us. Our mind's perception. That means there's something complicated. There's a lot of resistance. And so we can't carry any level of density. I'm literally shedding the, the weight of my own soul here. Like you're shedding the weight of your own soul. So we can be as lightweight as possible. <laughs> you're pretty quick to do this. We, we shed our layers, okay? <laughs> it just drops like, like a Halloween costume body or something. And we become two lightning bugs. <laughs> And we're living, we're alive. We're not like part of this black, smoky, peppery, dead lightning bugs. No, we're lightning bugs. All right, there's still a challenge to this. I keep seeing a clock, really super basic. It could even be a clock at a, at a high school, just a round clock that tells the time. It looks like a basic clock, a round clock, maybe in a kitchen or something. There's a sense, though, that the alarm is going off. 
but it's just a basic clock. There's no alarm clock to it. They do hear a buzzer, like in high school. And I do hear an alarm clock sound when I look at the kitchen clock. There's major energetic impact here. This is related to your heart and it's related to your third eye. Major energetic impact. I'm just having you inhale and exhale through it. Pay attention to it. Safe to feel the pressure. I'm convinced by choice we are through the door. But the feeling is we haven't even made it to the door yet. The scene's changing. Starting to appear like really nice bedroom, okay? And it's it's got like a fancy bed for a princess. It's got those posts in the corners and then like a canopy and some pretty fabric. It's like purple velvet. It's really nice. Okay. We can't see the bigger picture. We're like a drunkenness or something. Because it, there's a feeling that I'm stumbling. I, I see my way to the bed, but I stumble before I get there. And it's kind of funny in a way. And my, my eyesight's just kind of going back and forth. Like I'm on a boat out at sea, but I'm actually just walking. <laughs> so you can see there's a bit of laughter, but it's all serious. There's a sense that this is serious. There's no real understanding of why the bedroom. Why this drunken sensation? Why can't I walk a straight line? <laughs> why can't I get to where I'm trying to go? Why can't I just make it to the bed? <laughs> Again, I'm going back to the heart and to the third eye, which is seeing, witnessing. There's not a lot of clarity here, by the way still lacks clarity, but there's a sense of digestion being present with it. It'll make sense here as we continue to move forward. Huh. We're still lightning bugs. We're actually witnessing someone else stumbling. You and I aren't sure what to do. That's the communication. We aren't sure why we were taken to this area and this scene. I say, no, I need you to ask your heart, not your head. Does your heart know why we're here? Why is this important to you? Why is this important to your soul path? Why is this important to the goals, the spiritual boot camp? Why is it important? Because you need to be present. And you're looking at a sort of a mirage of yourself that's struggling. And it isn't funny. But you're not really sure how to pick her up. Not really sure how to help her navigate. This seems to be paralleling another lifetime as well. Of escapism. Escapism with support. What kind of support? Alcohol? Perhaps drugs? <laughs> it's like escapism with some, some kind of tools of our world that help us to let go of day-to-day -day life and the seriousness of it all. And to make it more lighthearted, perhaps. Not the bee sting of life, but something less painful. So I'm going into this lifetime and you're watching me and I'm going into this female part of yourself and she's a wreck. She's like a really, really sad and lonely person, but she's a very beautiful person, a very attractive person. Seems strange that such a attractive person could be so lonely, but she is an attractive, lonely person. And it helps for her to escape. This seems like alcohol is her choice here. 
And it's not just to have a good time, it's to get sloshed. Like, it's to go there. She doesn't want to wake up. She wants to, in a way, stay drunk forever and not wake up. But she's developing a conflict with herself because she knows this isn't the way. But she doesn't have any other way to find happiness in life. She has nothing else. That's an interesting statement. So the one thing that she has is alcohol. That's the one thing that she has to cope. That is it actually helping her cope? Is turning her into a wreck? She doesn't believe me immediately. I say, what if you're meant to be a writer? What if you're meant to, I don't know, do psychic readings? <laughs> what if you're meant to be the most amazing seamstress this world has ever known? What if you're meant to be a mother? What if you're meant to just be charming? What if you're meant to do, do other things that are going to require you to be 100% present? She's not easy to convince. She's made up her mind. And in a way, it's a suicide attempt because she's not going to change and she'll keep going until she's dead is basically the decision. That means that when her heart is calling her to think again or asking her to decide differently or challenging her to not drink tonight, her heart's messages are coming through, but she's renouncing them. And so she's convinced that this is her path, this is her way, and she is going to just douse herself in alcohol until she's dead. And this could be months, years. So God intervenes now. It's the only way I can describe it. Almost like we've seen it, we've lived it, we've done it. Talking to you. This is familiar to your soul. We're going to create what can only be described as a branch in the tree. So an ulterior pathway. And so you're going to live this lifetime again, but you're going to live it differently. And so once this sort of new branch of the tree happens, it's going to happen inside of you in your current lifetime, okay? She starts to scream that... She feels it in her heart. She feels as though it's ripping her soul into two pieces. God nods and says, you are going to become two versions of yourself in order to achieve this. You actually have to renounce what can only be described as 50% of your soul. But you're always 100%. Even if your soul is split into a billion parts, it's 100%. Each single part is 100%. So... Okay. Okay. It's strange, all right? I, I still see the bedroom. I see you grab your heart. Your heart is in pain. Your makeup is all over your face. You're crying so loud. You're in agony. You're begging for the agony of your life to be over and it has something to do with a very substantial sensation of severe loneliness and maybe you're married and it's not a healthy match not at all perhaps you know there's a reason why you are in agony in such a beautiful environment it literally you have everything except love you have everything but love and I see you still on the bed, you're in agony, and I see your soul split in half. I see the other half of your soul has a rip on one side. And this half then is going to endure another pathway. And you and your other soul are going to come back together again, almost seamlessly as though it never happened. And it's going to empower your life today. Let me watch the part that ripped. By the way, this lifetime feels like France to me. 
<sighs> this fancy life. I mean, I keep getting little images of like Marie Antoinette and the really big tall wigs. And so I feel like I could I could say that the location is France. Is it is it Vers Palais de Versailles or um, what, what's the timeline? I can't tell you. The rip is um, kind of like a child born without um, with some brain damage in a way, but they're able to function. They're just not very. They're not really able going to be able to take care of themselves for their whole life. Like um, they're able to do simple things, and they're able to love. It's kind of like a, a Down syndrome child, like uh, there's a beautiful, innocent simplicity about that. That persona and the ripped side is very simple, is born very a very simple life and is loved. Doesn't live a very long life. Seems to live into the teenage years, actually. That's amazing. The simplicity is just so, it takes away so many, so many complexities of the mind, so many demands. It just makes it sweet. You feel loved and you feel worthy of love. Even when you're born you know, not like everybody else. You're healthy. You even have a spiritual connection with God in this life. You learn about prayer. I see another life where you're actually a dog. You're like, um, it's like, what are the police officers' dogs? The canine dogs? <laughs> I can't think of what they're, German Shepherd, yes. You, you look like a German Shepherd. We have really long hair for a German Shepherd, but the colors are black and like a golden brown. So maybe you're a mix of some kind. And I see you're running you're chasing, you're breathing. What you're looking for is a sense of structure, a sense of, I, I, just, I just feel it's almost like you're looking to know, know your purpose or your calling, to be instructed, to be given a task, to be given a responsibility and to do that to your the best of your ability. I see a bunch of sheep appear now. And what's funny is uh, you and the sheep are actually friends. And they trust you. They actually feel that you protect them. And they may get stubborn at times, but they respect you. In a way, they do it to test you, but they kind of do it maybe out of playfulness sometimes or for something else to do. But I see that you always keep the sheep safe. You live a full life. You live into an old age dog. And you still stay by the sheep. Then there's other dogs now. Then you die out in the field. Of natural causes, just... You just die out in the field. I see now a child that's at a carnival. And it's like their first time at a carnival and they're small, maybe five, six years old. It's a little boy and he has an ice cream cone, just vanilla on a cone. And it's hot. And the ice cream's melting onto the ground. And your eyes are really big about this carousel. But you're not able to go on the carousel today. 
I can't understand why you're even at the carnival. It's a big one too. It's not a small thing. It's a big thing. It's like there's everywhere to go and anything and everything you could imagine to do. And a mother's hand is guiding you in a direction. And you feel like you're missing out on something special and you don't know why you're not allowed. Uh, that it's, it's almost like this mother doesn't understand. This mother is focused on all the wrong things. And they focus on the serious things and not the fun things. And I see you grow up to be a serious person. So and I see that you're in a, a nice tall building and you wear a suit when you go to work. And you have serious and important conversations with people. There's something dry about the the experience. Dry humor, dry terms, paperwork, signatures. But what's nice is the structure. You know what time, you know what days, you know how to do your work. You're in a high position, you're respected. You have clean clothes, you have a clean life. There's not much humor in this life. not really shown the next thing. I'm kind of in this gray area where it feels like we're going to be coming full circle. You're going to be connecting this sort of pathway with this pathway with the agony on the bed screaming and the alcoholism and the loneliness and the sadness. It's almost like pruning the tree. But I don't see anybody really trimming off that, that path. But I keep thinking that that path is going to be trimmed. But I don't know how it's supposed to merge with the other one. I'm just waiting. Oh. Oh, yeah. I bring in your lightning bug. And I show you everything that I've seen. And we're back at this room. It's kind of sad, but... It's because we're changing the timeline, she dies younger this time by about 20 years, believe it or not. Some kind of heart condition. <sighs> it's a really sad story. Doesn't make sense why it had to be like that. But it did. And you've endured that whole life from beginning to end, and now you're enduring a, a new version of it. Along with a few other lifetimes to create balance and harmony. But this is a sort of knitting and sewing something about your heart is mending your heart. Without any pain and suffering, it's like wanting to gently mend your heart. Even though it looked a bit difficult. I mean, it was hard to hear her screaming. And her heart in pain. It just, there was this, this sense of pain. Okay, a whole new scene is happening now. It feels like the theater, okay? And I'm in like a tight <laughs> bathing suit like outfit with the fishnet pantyhose and high heel black shoes and a fancy top hat with a feather in it. And I'm like a stage girl. This is more like um, kind of a sexy theater, but it's not, uh, you know, for strip tease or anything. It's more like for dancing and scantily clad clothes and stuff. <laughs> you know, it's more like that. Maybe a burlesque or something.
you're late. You're always running late. You, you know what? You you do have what it takes, but you don't because you're always running late. I mean, I see your manager. You could call it. There's a man here, and he is rolling his eyes at you again. And even I'm kind of irritated because I don't understand why you can't be on time. And that's like the major message of this. You don't go very far because you can't be relied on. Like nobody can count on you to be there on time. You seem like you're always late. And you were, you were hard to let go of because you were such a good fit. Like you had the looks or the body or the dance moves, but you were always late. But everything happened for all the right reasons. And I see that on the same day that you're fired, you start crying in, in, the, in the street as you walk home and there's a man that sees you. He, he can't imagine such a beautiful girl crying as she's walking down the street alone. And it's raining out. It's very romantic because he happens to have an umbrella. And he opens his umbrella and says very kindly like, hey, miss, um, can I help you? Um, please take my umbrella. He would even give you his umbrella. That's like how how moved he was. And you're very beautiful. And so maybe it's easier. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but yes, that's happening. And you're really kind of embarrassed that he's catching you crying. And But in a way, it's just... You open up. <laughs> Not, not like you tell him what happened and that you were fired. You just open up and you take the umbrella and you thank him and you both start walking together and he just starts talking and talking and talking and talking. It's, it's just so strange, but somehow or another, um, all the, the rain is starting to dry up and the sun is coming out. And he takes the umbrella and you both laugh about that and you decide to go to the park together and just sit on a park bench and get to know one another. I see this is like a great love story, okay? <laughs> An impossibly great love story. <laughs> and you both decide to meet again and again at the same park bench. You love each other's company and you, it takes some time, like you don't rush into anything, but you decide to take it a step further and then take it another step further. The reason why, um, what echoes back is that there's a reason why you didn't just jump into anything and that's because you were conflicted about your own sort of stance or position in life. It, it seemed like you were attracted to working or attracted to having, um, like being a busybody. And you wanted to find a calling. You wanted to find your purpose. And it wasn't necessarily falling in love. It was actually making money or being um, finding success for yourself as, as a woman. I just, I feel that. I don't even think that it doesn't, it, vibrationally it doesn't show me that you really tell him your background story right away. I actually see that because things go slow and because you're working on yourself and working on finding yourself and what your next calling is going to be, it actually is a gift that helps that this bond between you and this man actually build into something really solid. I, I see that eventually you do get married, you, you leave work behind and just become a full-time mother. He takes care of you. Just like he did on the street when he gave you that umbrella. Like you were the apple of his eye. And I'm shown now like the ring or the circle of life is complete. And this ring of lives between the one where you were wealthy and alcoholic and died... And this branch that grew where it's, it's almost like you had such a simple life that you weren't, it was like a, a Down syndrome type scenario. It was clean and it was tidy and it was kind and you understood prayer and it, it's something beautiful about that. 
In this life as a dog who tended to the sheep and the relationship you had with the sheep and your purpose. And this man who was, it's a business world, kind of a drier life, no humor, but there's a structure. There's a, a knowing. There's a clockwork about it. It's all coming full circle to this life where you're always running late. And this man that you met and the beautiful life you share with each other. And again, I see your heart in this lifetime is working on being mended. And I keep seeing sewing and stitching, which is a little weird for me because I don't like sharp objects in the energy world. I don't, it's not necessary. You can mend and heal with light. You don't need to use scissors and needles and stitch and pop, poke holes and you don't need to do it. And so when I see the stitching, it's like, ouch, that looks like it hurts. Let me just touch this needle here. Yeah, I just remove it. And for each stitch, I place all these lifetimes. And there's one of acceptance here about this. You had everything but love life. And that's important that, that it's not necessarily pruned. There's a reason why they, I kept thinking, well, we got, there's something about pruning the tree, but they never really cut that branch off. So I think the reason why is because it's a beautiful branch of your tree. Then why would we remove it, you know? Because from that branch, you know, new experiences are born. And it's sort of the life, the ring of life or the circle of life continues, you know, for your own soul. So for each stitch, I place one of these lifetimes. So there's no stitches there anymore. And there's something kind of built up in a pocket of your heart. And it's kind of like, I don't know, like a zit or something. But it's like you got to pop it out and all this goo is like coming out on the one side. Just an infection, you know, there's energy infections too. They just happen. And then from that side of your heart, I feel like let's just welcome something of a beautiful light, a beautiful love, a beautiful feeling, a relationship with yourself, you know, a beautiful sense of connection with who you are. And maybe there's something to the lightning bug, because I really love lightning bugs. I think they're majestic little insects. You don't really see them as much these days. I think they're special, especially for kids, you know. And they always come out at night and they do that. They blink their light butts, you know. <laughs> they just do it. And so I fill that part of your heart with a prairie full of lightning bugs. And there's no real sense of pepper anymore. May I ask God if we could get a definition for why that was the beginning? Like, why do we open the door and why that first? Like, what is th what else could we learn from that message? <sighs> we're returning to the original door and we're walking back in now. It's hard to say what it represents. It's collecting now almost like magnetically, like pulling in all the pieces and it seems to be building something before our eyes with all the little specks are adding up into something. And the, the word wholeness is coming to mind. Like imagine we had the Statue of Liberty and then we broke it apart into like a infinite numbers of tiny like a trillion tiny little pieces or something and now let's say we scattered the tiny little pieces but they they weren't really going anywhere and we're inhaling and exhaling them 
and we're bothered by it and we have this conflict and it seems to be creating suffering but really beneath the surface of what's creating suffering is the separation of so many parts that just want to come together to become the statue of liberty and so as these parts come together in this beautiful little garden space with a waterfall and all that it seems to be building a statue of some kind like it's coming together and becoming whole so was it an inner demon was it some kind of nasty pestilence or was it actually all those pieces and we were inhaling and exhaling and not aware yet of the path that's necessary it's like everything is just a stepping stone to the next understanding and so when we come full circle now we can see with a greater clarity and we can do the next thing to make it even that much better right and so all the pieces are coming together in a sort of like 3d printing or something <laughs> like a statue of some kind Okay, it's, I don't know, it's like kind of silvery, holographic looking, kind of glitchy looking. Yes, mind and heart, mind and heart, mind and heart. That was part of the that um, first message too. I feel that um, whew, coming back up like pulsating, mind and heart pulsating. And I see that you are going to step in now into this sort of holographic, sort of glitchy material made out of all the pieces. And it's just, it's like a complicated old skin. It's like um, old mindset, old way of being, old way of defining yourself as your best self, for instance. That really, your old best self was just a skin that's being shed so that you can be your new best self, you know? And so it's not really clear and it's not really coming together because it's something that it's time to let it go. And again, the message is about, it. it's not, it's hard to know like how to be ready or it's hard to know until you go through, right, life. So something about trying um, something about saying, you know what, I'm going to step into this and I'm going to align with whatever this is about, only to say that, you know what, this is a me that is the skin, the layers of what I once was. And I'm not going to uh, sort of choke on that or be affected by that because I love all the me's that I've ever been throughout all time, especially the me that I am today, because you're the most you you've ever been, okay? You're the most tangible you you've ever been. The most real you you've ever been. And now God sort of pulls this whole space into another dimension. We just stand here. And... Uh, Everything feels like you're coming up and out of yourself, coming up into more of your physical human body. And you're cherishing who you are more. And, and that statement is interesting because we've looked at lifetimes here that help to build the dynamic you that you are. But then we also think about this lifetime and which self, you know, oh, I love that previous me. I wish I could be that me again or something. And so we have these other selves from our one lifetime that we know about. <laughs> and, and we think about that too in the circle of life as we circulate around in our mind and our thoughts and our feelings. So it's having true heart and true love for who you are and true love for your soul as well. And feeling that wholeness in your soul and in your heart and in your human self and in your life at the nucleus of all lifetimes is where you stand. <laughs> so that's that is a pretty cool session there's a lot to that session thank you very much for this experience i i'll be thinking about a lot of that i appreciate it and thank you everybody for watching if any of you are interested in having me take a look at something to help you in your life you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com all right have a great day everybody